John here guys and today we're talking about the jumper T light do you want to learn how to fly a drone do you want to start flying drones are you interested in drones well the first thing that you're going to need to purchase is a transmitter or a controller or a radio they all mean the same thing and this is one of the most significant releases we've seen in a number of years and that's because it is a full featured radio it has a multi protocol module built in that can connect to up to 50 different types of protocols so it's very versatile it has hall sensor gimbals built in which are the type of sticks that you want that is going to make your movement smoother this is hobby grade but most importantly the price is only about 60 to 70 dollars and that is super significant because there have been a couple of low price options on the market the fly sky radio and the fr sky qx7 which is about fifty dollars and a hundred dollars respectively those are no longer really um relevant and we need to stop newcomers from purchasing those and go to a brief explanation of why the qx7 is no longer recommended is because the newer models look exactly the same from the outside but they are no longer compatible with FR Sky's older receivers like the XM Plus without flashing hardware, which is difficult, time consuming, and there's three or four different versions that all look the same and share the same name. This has become very confusing for new buyers. Older users don't know this, so they still recommend that radio. It was a great radio. I used one for several years, but it's too much of a gamble to block you from being able to get started if you purchase one today. Something like this. Now I'm gonna continue to tell you why this is not necessarily the radio for me as a long time, very involved RC enthusiast, but why it may be the perfect radio. This is Jumper's flagship model, the T18 Pro. I also have a Crossfire V2 module plugged in in the back, a Crossfire diamond antenna up here. I have some Team Black Sheep honey stick-ins right here. So all together, this complete setup is about three hundred and fifty dollars that's that's way too expensive for the average person that wants to start flying now keep in mind this is probably my fourth or fifth radio i bought this after i had been doing this hobby for a few years and i wanted to get more serious but people starting need to buy something that is cheaper but instead of like the fly sky radio was a good starter but you would outgrow that in three to six months and have to buy more money wasting money this is a radio that can stay with you for a few years it is that good and it's perfectly usable you can in fact probably fly this your entire fpv career now why is it not for me i'm used to some of those other features and i'm used to a longer stick throw but this is actually very close to the tango 2 which i've been running recently that costs 160 dollars for the regular model or 200 dollars for the pro model significantly cheaper it's also upgradable there's a little module bay back here that you can attach a connector to that means that you can add protocols like crossfire ghost or tracer to this no problem it's upgradable that is one of the reasons why it's allowing you to continue upgrading and diving deeper into this hobby this is the beta fpv light radio that is 40 dollars. it's also a really good option the gimbals are very good the layout is very good the form factor and size is very similar but you can see there's no screen on there so it's very difficult to configure different options on here and there is no module accessibility so you can't upgrade this so while this is a little bit cheaper you're going to find yourself upgrading this as soon as you dive a little bit deeper yes and before anybody says it i know there's people that have hacked this up to pieces and figured out a way to add those things on there but you know the average newcomer is not going to do this you're going to want to get something that can work out of the box the other things that this can do is it has a usb-c port that charges the internal battery inside this uses a single 18650 cell to charge this battery and run it um, but it does not come with one so you're gonna have to buy this battery separately you can get them for about five to ten bucks um, no problem it'll actually last you a fairly good amount of time and i love the fact that if you plug it in it charges it so you don't ever have to take this battery out to charge it at all you just kind of set it and forget it now this requires the type of 18650 cell that have the little head poking out 
I don't have any of these. I have like six of these, but I don't have any that sticks out. So when I put it in, it wouldn't actually fit. So what I very delicately did was took a small driver and just bent the little metal things out to where it fit and made contact. Do that very carefully if that's what you're gonna do. Um, but if you're shopping for 18650 cells, just get the one where the positive side sits a little bit proud. So I spent several hours now flying this thing on some little crafts around my house, playing a few hours worth of simulator. It's really laid out exceptionally well. This has full hobby grade switches and it's almost exactly the same size as an Xbox One controller. One of the things that I like, but if you're not used to it, you're going to require getting some used to, is that your index finger is going to want to sit right here between all four switches. That means um, you could very easily move these up or move these back ones back with the push of a button. So you're going to want to train your muscle memory to have one of these as your arm switch and be able to just go boom, disarm super easily. I really like that. Um, I like that the USB-C is on top. So if you are playing simulator, it just plugs in and it's gonna charge while you're playing and it's gonna feel great. The screen on here is very small, but it's still easy to see. I actually prefer that. A small non-color screen means that you're gonna get longer battery life. Um, you don't really ever need to be looking at this screen for anything other than when you set up a new model. And so the radios that have the large touch screen, color screen, to me that's just a huge waste because all it's gonna do is make it more frequent that you're gonna have to charge it back up. Um, the button layout is really nice. This is the power of the button in the middle. Uh, I don't love that they put the return and enter over here and then they put the up and down over here. On a lot of radios, they're kind of all four in a line so that it took my brain a little bit of getting used to to get used to that. But once I did, it's it's not really a big deal. Um, all of these buttons on the bottom down here are actually trim buttons, uh, so you can adjust your trim very easily. Um, this is the standard OpenTX uh, software that's on here. It doesn't have the voice pack by default, but I actually like that. I hate when that lady is barking at me all day. Um, so this is perfectly usable. It's well under a hundred bucks. There's two versions. There's one that has a um, a module that's only compatible with four, FR Sky and a couple others, and then there's the one that has the full featured four-in-one multi-protocol module that can do 50 protocols. I would suggest paying the extra eight to 10 bucks for that one. That'll put your price right around 60 to 70 bucks. It is removable, so you can easily store this in a very small compartment. Uh, for those that use something like a Tango 2 and you also wanna keep something to be able to fly non-crossfire module models, this is the same price as buying like a multi-protocol module. So you can just have two radios. They're so small. Two radios of this size actually take up a lot less room than just one of these. I've been using this less and less frequently. Although it does have the most premium of everything, it just takes up so much space. Ugh. And it's so dang heavy. This is a game changer. This is now the recommendation for anybody interested in flying drones. If you decide it's not for you, you can easily sell this for 50 to 60 bucks and not have too much of an investment. The second thing that I would buy after buying this is a simulator. You're gonna to wanna to buy either liftoff or Velocidrone so that you can start training yourself. That will let you learn how to fly a drone on your computer while you spend the rest of the time shopping and learning about what you want to buy, what kind of drone you want to get. Um, that'll help you get that simulator practice. When you're first learning to fly, you're going to have about 500 crashes. So if you can have the first 400 of those virtually, you're less likely to crash your real drone, costing you expensive dollars. So great job on this jumper. This is the new recommendation going forward for any newcomer. Anybody that asked me, where should I start? This is it, the jumper T-Lite. Thanks guys.